What's up everybody, this is Tubasolo coming at you and today we're going to take a look at the Soto Amicus Stove. What's up everybody, my name's Steve and this channel is all about hiking, backpacking, and enjoying the outdoors in Southern California and beyond. If that interests you, consider subscribing. Now let's get into this Amicus uh, Stove. I went ahead and I got this thing off of um, mass drop, I guess it's called drop now, but uh, I got this off of mass drop. Um, I want to say it came in about a month ago or so, and it's just kind of been sitting on my desk. And I really didn't want to do anything with it until I got a chance to get it on camera. I had um, some responsibilities to take care of, and I didn't get a chance to do this video until now. But not only am I going to unbox this stove, but I want to also compare it to the Soto Windmaster. Now the Soto Windmaster is what I've been using for the last few um, adventures that I've had and I've thoroughly enjoyed using this stove but it does have some flaws that are addressed here in the Amicus stove uh, but we'll go over those in a little bit so first things first let's just go ahead and open up this box and see what's actually in there. As you can see I have not opened this at all hopefully there uh, actually is a stove in here uh, I purchased it from a reputable dealer, so yeah, I'm assuming there's going to be a stove in here, but yeah, it is the uh, first time that I am opening this thing up. Okay, sorry, I had to come back and um, I had to shut my computer and my phone up, sorry about that. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into this box right here, if I can get through this kryptonite. All right, so that's what we got on the inside there. Looks like we got the paperwork, the stove, and a carrying bag. As usual, who cares about the paperwork? Check out the bag. It is certainly a little bit different than this one. It's certainly a lot tougher kind of canvasy looking material. This is more like nylon-y style material. But um, yeah, it's interesting how that is. And then inside here, we've got our stove. Now I purposely picked up the one with the igniter because I wanted to um, to go ahead and have it match kind of the Soda Windmaster and the igniter on the Soda Windmaster has been great so I'm assuming the igniter on this is going to be just as good. One other interesting thing that it, you know me I'm I'm a bit of a <laughs> I tend to fiddle with uh, with gear but I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually see if this can be removed at some point. Uh, maybe we'll do it on video, maybe not, because I don't want to embarrass myself if I can't do it right and I end up breaking this. But um, it's just interesting. I know with the Soda Windmaster, I went ahead and I removed the, uh, the um, piezo igniter. Um, I know it can be done with the Soda Windmaster. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if it can actually be done with the Amicus stove. The one nice thing about the Amicus when it comes to... The Windmaster is that the pot supports are actually attached to the stove and they're very easy to use. They just clip on to a little catch right here. You can see there. And it fixes the one problem. I guess if there's any drawback, if there's any drawback that one could pin on the Soda Windmaster, is that. Um, let me see here, is that the legs are a separate piece to the stove. Essentially, you hear all these parts moving in here. Those are all the pieces to the stove. And the nice thing about the Amicus is that it actually keeps all the pieces together. So, obviously, you run less of a risk of losing something and being able to actually use your stove when you arrive at camp. But um, that is pretty much it right there. The knob here, the, the regulator, turns a lot tighter than on the Windmaster. That's kind of interesting. And then let's just check the piezo igniter. Hopefully, maybe you could see it on camera. Let's see if there's a way we can... Let's see, do I actually see it? I see it. I mean, just barely. I think the lights are maybe washing out the uh, spark. But the spark is going. But that's essentially the, the, the Amicus. I got my notes over here. The Amicus is uh, allegedly supposed to weigh 2.6 ounces. So let's go ahead and test that real quick. Let's go ahead and bring this guy in. Old trusty uh, kitchen scale. And um, we'll go ahead and give this guy... Okay, so this version 2.8 instead of 2.6. Uh, I'm sorry. 
it says without the igniter it's supposed to be 2.6 and with the igniter it says it's 2.9 I show 2.8 on my scale so it's actually coming in below spec as far as grams are concerned without the igniter it's supposed to be 75 grams with the igniter it's supposed to be 81 grams and mine is coming in at 79 grams so for the version that I have it's coming in under spec which is you know needless to say great granted it's only a few grams but nonetheless it's coming in under spec so that's pretty nice let's go ahead and move this thing out of the way and we're gonna go ahead and compare this to the Soto Windmaster now one thing right off the bat that I can tell you look at this mess this is what I'm talking about that's the one drawback that is the one drawback to the Soto Windmaster it has multiple pieces that you have to keep track of but right off the bat when you look at the Soto Windmaster you look at the Amicus the one thing that you can tell is that the Windmaster has a vastly bigger head and it almost seems like it's even more recessed than the Amicus but there you go one stove is actually smaller than the other that's um, one of the things that you're gonna you know I'm gonna say that that's actually a benefit I mean the reason I'm pausing is because I'm trying to decide is this really a benefit I mean I like the fact that this has the bigger burner head I guess it has a more dispersed flame but when you're when you're doing stuff just like cup cooking um, having a smaller flame is really not gonna be that big of a deal let me go ahead and grab a pot here here's an example of a pot that a lot of people use Tokes 550 when you look at the bottom of this, I mean, the bulk of what you're going to be heating up is dead center on these small pots. So really having a wide flame is not necessarily that beneficial, especially if you're somebody who just does, you know, mountain houses. Let's compare it to the, you know, the Windmaster. I mean, yeah, it definitely covers a bigger area, but ultimately when you're looking at the size of this thing in comparison, I mean, we haven't even attached the legs to the Windmaster yet, and it's already, you could tell the Amicus is uh, certainly smaller, which is great. I mean, my goodness. Just look at that. Now, one area where the Amicus doesn't do as well as the Soto Windmaster is in the micro-regulator. Now, I tried to find some information on this, I'm looking at my um, uh, my notes over here. It says for the Windmaster that it has a micro regulate micro regulator with needle valve system. Um, the one thing that that's going to do that regulate that micro regulator is actually going to allow you to burn fuel more evenly. So now again, this is just theoretical. I can only imagine that these stoves are going to work perfectly fine at. at all altitudes for the most part but you may run into some trouble at higher altitudes or in colder temperatures um, actually probably just colder temperatures not so much higher altitude I think um, but you may run into trouble where this particular regulator will not work as efficiently as this style of regulator now I wish I knew the science of it but I just know that the way this regulator works is it's a mu it's a much more even stream coming through than this style but I will tell you this and my buddy Matt uh, from lead me outdoors I backpack with him all the time he has the amicus he has had zero problems with his amicus I saw him use this at 9,000 feet and I saw him use this at 11,500 feet and uh, both times absolutely no problems with the amicus stove So, um, you know, take that with a grain of salt. I mean, it could all very well be a commercial, but I can tell you that the Windmaster has given me absolutely no problems whatsoever um, when I've used it. Let's also compare kind of the size here. We'll, we'll go with the Triflex because that's about the closest in size. You can kind of see the difference between the two. I mean, they're all you know they're basically about the same same distance and one has four legs one has three <laughs> 
for those of you that have watched some of my adventure videos, you certainly know that I have uh, I've maybe spilled a uh, cup or two using this guy with the Triflex. Of course, my own fault, but um, I will not lie. It will be ni it would have been nice to have four uh, four pot supports the last time I had used it when um, when I had spilled my coffee. Wait, let me get all the accelerants out of the way. Um, let's see how this thing does so I'm gonna go ahead and first make sure that the regulator is closed entirely and oh here's something really nice check that out it's got a rubber gasket on it so that's very helpful but wait a minute here oh I see the rubber gasket is on the outside so that will actually fall into into this part of the canister that metal part will fall into that canister and then that rubber seal will uh, that rubber gasket will create the seal. So let's go ahead. Yeah, got that there. Let's make sure it's not too close to the camera. Hmm. Now, what was all that about? Let's see here. Oh, that is not good. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed my lighter because that was interesting. It did not fire up. Let's try it one more time. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Nothing. Okay. Let's try. Okay, so we've got it fired up. As you can obviously hear it. I'm sure you'll see it getting hot. I'm going to go ahead and move it a little bit further back from the camera. Sure, sooner or later here you're gonna go ahead and see this thing get hot but um, yeah well, that's kind of disappointing let's go ahead and try that one more time boy that that really I don't know what on earth that was all about huh and I fired right right up you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video for a sec I'm gonna let that cool down I'm gonna try that one more time because I mean you guys saw me pressing that that thing and let's try it just one more time here real quick huh that lit up right away okay let me go ahead and let that cool down and we'll come back to this and try it when the uh, the stove is cooled down maybe something with it being cold had something to do with it okay I am back so it seems like everything has cooled off it certainly feels cool to the touch now so we're gonna go ahead and try this one more time hopefully it was just a fluke what had happened earlier let's give this thing another go look at that wow look how many times I had to hit that for it to actually turn on well that is certainly worrisome so I don't know you know Take that with a grain of salt, everybody. I mean, I always carry a backup lighter with anything that I do. Um, so that's something that you're probably going to want to bring along if you're using that thing. Because um, that's really interesting. I'm really quite surprised at how, how not great that was. Okay, so a little bit of an update on what exactly is going on with the Soto uh, Amicus. I started clicking this and what I started to notice is that it was misfiring like it would actually spark from time to time but um, then I'd have like a succession of 10 or 12 uh, 10 or 12 like clicks and nothing happened so I think I just ended up with one that happens to have a defective um, defective piezo igniter uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and see which uh, pots this thing kind of nests nicely into right here I got the Tokes 550 pot Nice, look at that, that nests in there now. It, the Tox 550, no matter what stove you use, it, there's never enough room to add a, um, add a canister in there, so it's not even a consideration with that. But it at least nests inside there, which is nice. And we've got the um, Snowpeak 600 here. Same difference, nests in there. You could probably fit a canister down in there. Ah, look at that. Now that is slick. That fits in there with the canister in there for a nice clean system. Snow Peak 600. Bam. Good stuff. 
Um, Snowpeak 700, it'll obviously fit. And that will also allow you to add your canister in there, which is nice. Uh, MSR Titan kettle. Let's see, can we fit a canister next to it? So there you go, you can fit a canister next to it and you can put the uh, you can put the top on there flush. That's another really great option right there. Look at that. I love it. Um, and for the life of me, I never remember the name of this cup, but this is like a 400 something cup from Evernew. It obviously fits in there, but you know, obviously nothing else will fit in there. And then finally, the to or the um, Snow Peak 450. It fits perfectly in there. All right, well that's that. So I'll keep you guys updated on that piezo igniter. I'm gonna mess around with it a little bit more. Eh, kind of a bummer. It was a great, great stove, but uh, yeah, it seems like I got a faulty piezo igniter in there. Uh, one other thing. Sorry, I forgot to do this. Just to show you guys how this all fits in the uh, pouch. If you were somebody that wanted to go ahead and use it, and there you go. That's what it looks like when it sits in the pouch. So. That is that looks like it closes up a lot better. Okay, yeah, so it closes up entirely over the uh, over the pouch. I mean uh, over the uh, stove. But yeah, that is pretty much it. I will go ahead and keep you guys updated on the piezo igniter, and um, yeah, we'll hopefully revisit this another day, and maybe we'll find out what exactly happened uh, with this particular one. But that is the Soto Amicus stove. Hopefully you found this information useful. If you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also make sure to hit the uh, bell for notifications because you never want to miss a video. You definitely don't want to miss out if I do an update on this thing. You don't want to miss out uh, if something um, comes up with this piezo igniter. That'd be, you know, you'd be missing out. You don't want to be the only one missing out, huh? But uh, yeah, go ahead and hit the um, uh, subscribe button. Make sure that you hit the bell for notifications. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, take care.